so we were talking about how, you know, is it possible to recreate historical beers? And I mean, that's one aspect of, of these beers we'll never be able to recreate is the character of being aged in a 13,000 barrel wooden vat. But Porter, what was just so popular, and um, it, there's several things that, that, that made it go out of style. Most of it is uh, the World Wars. Um, Pre-World War I, uh, your average porter would have been, you know, 1055 OG, you know, probably five and a half, six percent alcohol. War, World War I just destroyed uh, beer in general. But coming out of World War I, that same beer, say 10, 15 years later, would have been, you know, 1035, 1038 original gravity. And it might have gone up a little bit between World War I and World War II, but then in World War II it dropped back down again. Remember we said that like Stout and Porter are just kind of brothers from the same mash. It's just a slightly stronger version of Porter. So Stout Porter was the, uh, the term for it. And by the time Porter in World War II, after World War II, it's just down so low, you know, 1026, 1028 original gravities, that drinkers just switched to stout. You know, stout was basically what porter tasted like before, and porter just disappeared. Uh, by, by 1960, uh, porter really doesn't exist in England anymore. Um, there might be a, a holdout here or there, but it, it, it's pretty much disappeared, and it took, uh, American craft brewing, uh, anchor brewing, to start making a porter in uh, the 1970s, and that reinvigorated the style. And uh, some English brewers started uh, started making it again, and it's uh, encountering a resurgence. But it, it's very interesting that that a beer that at one point was like 80 percent of all beer production to to disappear completely within a hundred years. It gives me hope for uh, uh, pastry stouts and New England IPAs that they will uh, eventually disappear and we'll get something else.